So Newton, good evening as the case may be. This is Arthur Rodgett with Ultra. And thank you for joining us today for our webinar entitled Artificial Intelligence Powered Contract Life Cycle Amendment Alliances with Strategy. A uh, few sort of uh, housekeeping issues before we get going. Uh, um, this session is being recorded, both the audio and the video. There will be time at the end for questions and answers. Uh, I'd like you to type your questions in via the chat or Q&A function of your web empowered webinar console. I will questions and we will get to as many as we can. Um, past experiences that we'll get to about half, if not 80% of them before our time runs out. Um, uh, we will be uh, keeping everyone's phone on mute. So uh, this is just sort of uh, takes those minor, uh, you know, pings, bounces, uh, you know, in phone calls on other lines, et cetera, uh, so that everyone can sort of uh, focus on what we're going to go through. Um, also, uh, we have two or three poll questions that will pop up uh, throughout the session. Um, please do uh, participate. Uh, we're not going to be showing actual numbers. We'll be showing percentage of attendees. We'll get a sense of what some of the challenges that are facing your peers or the relative uh, maturity of your peer organization. And really, uh, I invite you to participate. It uh, makes things much more interactive. Um, plus, it gives us the ability to uh, learn a little bit and perhaps adjust our message as we go through. Today, uh, we are out for about one hour. Um, I'll try to uh, accelerate a little bit and give everybody back a little bit more time to their day, uh, especially those of us in the U.S. facing a potentially long weekend. Thank you again for taking uh, your time and uh, ending it with us on um, the last week of August. about me. Um, my name is Arthur Raguette, uh, the Executive Vice President and one of the founders of Altria. Um, I am, uh, by and large, a technology person, um, a huge evangelist of the application of practical technology or the practical application of advanced technology, uh, which you prefer. Bottom line, um, technology be, should be used to advance the business process. So that is enhanced uh, efficiency or uh, improved organizational growth or broader good uh, you know, democratization of access. Um, it is all about leveraging technology to get a better result for the most people. The agenda uh, looks to be pretty busy. Uh, really what we'll do is we'll start off just sort of an overview of the five levels of contract management maturity um, as we see them, and this is uh, grossly plagiarized. Uh, from our friends at Gartner, um, and then step through the, the main topic uh, of today's session, how do we align strategy and operations by utilizing an artificial intelligence-enabled contract lifecycle platform? And what are the current challenges facing organizations today in realizing some of their strategic goals? And how can uh, a platform uh, help them accomplish those goals in a more uh, rest, uh, less painful, more user-friendly way. Um, anyways, um, it is all about you know, ensuring ease of access, um, ease of use, and ease of information, uh, getting information in and getting information out of a contract platform. The future perspective is going to be interesting. This is uh, based on an, an earlier discussion that we had uh, championed or, or forum. And what we've seen, of course, is a lot of what was once a uh, future state um, is now the uh, as-is state. Uh, and we've certainly accomplished a lot in terms of the uh, encapsulation of artificial intelligence and empowerment of uh, the user experience through more applied use of AI. Um, interesting bit for, for those of you who are, are a little uh, put off by the of artificial intelligence, whether that's a real thing or not, is how seamless, how hidden the artificial intelligence is and that it's simply a, uh, oftentimes, a guiding hand to facilitate or to enable or to fast track the process. 
touch on taking the CLM beyond uh, the sort of core legal contract management teams or the business approval teams to broader uh, audience at large. Uh, those folks from running in and around an organization, folks who are closer to your trading partners, whether they be customers or suppliers, because it's really through empowering them that you can leverage the value of a livestock management platform the most, simply of enabling broader scale and broader reach. So um, please do continue to throw questions up. If they're technical questions, uh, you will see a marketing login on the uh, platform. Uh, do feel free to reach out and chat directly, um, and we'll do all set up and straightened out. Uh, for those who have to uh, leave a little bit early, uh, we understand that sometimes that happens. Uh, uh, this replay will be available uh, probably within a day or two. So the five levels of maturity. Um, as we talk to folks, uh, we often ask them to sort of put themselves um, into this uh, you know, ranking of one to five. So you and I'm sure many of you have seen that uh, are somewhere in the two to three, maybe the three to four, four range. Uh, but just as a reminder, you know, sort of that early stage mail process, paper or email-based contracting, your cabinet is basically your Outlook folders, maybe, maybe shared drive or common folder system. Uh, automation uh, besides that, maybe you've got some favorite templates or favorite docs that you use a baseline and clone from them. Better than uh, certainly. Um, that sort of next stage up is the central repository. So it's stored centrally, not unlike a shared folder system, but you've got access control. You've got a level of drafting that is still very much manual, very much the skills of the negotiator. And it may be a matter of uh, number two date stamping, adding people's initials as they go through the review process. Again, not having any version control, but still fairly rudimentary. When we get to stage three, this is where we start to see a vast majority of the folks that we talk to, and probably the, of the market overall. Approval workflow, whether it's uh, an enhanced version of Microsoft Outlook routing or something more substantive. You've got collaborative contract creation, the ability to have multiple, multiple contributors, or as I like to think of it, multiple assemblers in complex documents. Often where people start to see the benefit of, of new templates or clauses to speed in which you can create best first draft of your agreements. As we move forward, this becomes a very interesting space. Just the authoring and the approval process, we want to start managing what happens after contracts are signed. And the reason why it's interesting is this is where an organization's use of technology lends their value a team as a group, as a department. And gives it to sort of uh, uh, trumpet their success to the rest of the organization. By the goal in the contract, right, the memorialization of that relationship with the optional performance or customers or the performance of your suppliers, you now have the ability to maximize value of the contracts that you work so hard to assemble. And again, Right, went into authoring an agreement is really nothing compared to the 60 or months or the five years that that agreement runs. This information in or out of your platforms towards your CLM for that sort of stare and compare for basic performance and for pattern matching. Start to be able to leverage smart clauses or conditions. Trigger particular events. Now, some feedback on the line. Um, if that's the, 
web name, um, please watch your connection. Stage integrated process. This is a very tight coupling between the contract lifecycle management platform and your operational systems. For, I'll say, metrics on post award, but also more of a seamless connection for, let's say, your CRM to your CPQ platform. And this by change of information truly makes the contract lifecycle management platform form in a solution set. So it's really how to leverage both your advancing and maturity with the ties to technology. We're defining your objectives with your strategy, your goals. And yours may be a little different, and we're going to ask about those in a, a slide or two is efficient contract authoring. Optimize use of internal resources. Stability or minimizing revenue leakage if we're looking at a customer facing or sell side domain. And then whether it's regulatory, industrial, health and safety, GDPR, et cetera. So what we I don't want to say lofty because these are all very real, very tangible strategic goals. There may be intermediate operational challenges that you may face. Namely, from scratch, which still may continue, is time consuming and error prone. There may be a clearly defined workflow or approval system. And that creates a, a, an inherent time lag between best first draft and closed agreements. Being able to draw data around out your contracts from different systems is often a challenge. Legal has a particular system in use. Sales has a system in use. Procurement has a system in use. Drag this across multiple disparate systems gives limited visibility. It's impossible to track obligations and milestones. Then the common thing, and this really impacts compliance more than anything else, is the difficulty many organizations face in managing supporting documents. Whether it be like a vendor's W-8 or insurance or yeah. So let's get or two and ask you for the chat you face. So what is, if any, face your organization after implementing a CLM? A, some solution offers limited functionality. B, it requires intensive training and may not be user-friendly. C, limited scope for configuration and a configuration, not customization. D, difficultly integrate with your ERPs or your CRMs, or have an implemented CLM system yet. So we're gonna have 30 seconds. Again, what is, if any, faced by your organization after implementing a CLM system? A solution offers limited functionality. B requires intensive training, not user friendly. C limited scope for configuration. D difficult integration with ERP. Or with seven seconds to go, haven't implemented a CLM system yet. And Mark, be so kind as to share the percentages.
Well, for hints and challenges there. So we may show that in a little bit. So, you know, detail. So, we teach your goals, right? Say contract authoring, optimization of internal resources, increased profitability, revenue leakage control, and clients. Let's review these one at a time and see how we can align operational objectives with these strategic goals. So, all right, efficient contract authoring or assembly. Um, the operational objectives there would mean, you know, easy and accelerated drafting, um, assembling from pre-vetted content. You know, from the second book, there's standardized error-free contract language. I mean, that's sort of the holy grail or the panacea. Um, the reality is we can go very close to this through leverage standard templates and clauses. By a natural environment, a native environment, for those folks to assemble rather than uniquely draft ever and wherever possible. So you get easy and success. Being able to provide a native Microsoft Word environment and clause library and a wizard-based authoring so that that can be generated through a series of interrogatories, questions, and answers that then left able to uh, input third-party template paper and provide a level of visibility, tracking, clawable granularity to the third content as you for your own. Even being able to match third parties library and understand what gaps may exist futuristic, but it is in fact a reality today. It's within the context of having configurable templates for contract types or contract subtypes and being provided a, a playbook level clause library functionality and like that based on your existing uh, your legacy heritage data. Um, is that key? Software environment. That's what 99% of us use to negotiate, author, wordsmith, and assemble our contracts. Why not use Microsoft Word? Have it the contract platform, which for in our case is uh, a software as a service cloud deployed platform. Which has to be the Microsoft Word. Then you access your templates, modify, update, and insert clauses, assemble new templates from that, add your metadata, even end and expand your whole workflow process all from in Microsoft Word, never having to come into the ultra browser based product. More browser based product. Here's a screenshot of accessing a clause library. Library should have your default clause, your alternate clauses, your fallback clause. Um, hints, when used, this should be the playbook. Rather, uh, you know, atomic or granular clauses and rolling them into your templates for your subtypes of agreements. Then when you're taking apart third party templates, because really half the contracts are sort of around the world are third party, right? Not a Make the third party content this is a template into its individual clauses and through enhanced art intelligence based platform take each path from the incoming template, classify or categorize it to one of existing clauses or alters or fallback clauses within your clause library. Next step. And extract metadata from party content to fan boarding, ingestion, or negotiation and review. To the point of being able to trigger specific reviews based on clause content, and context of clause and the information within it. Use 
is in the direction of optimizing your internal resources. Right? You're more with less. You're bringing more in. You're using your outside law firms less. So how is the productivity of the contracting function? And does mean that we have to have tighter integration with other enterprise systems? Well, I think both is yes. So having a platform, browser-based, that's multiple methods of communication, including a collaborative chat environment for real-time instant messaging, contract team or the legal team to interact with operations, sales, HR, separate, and to do configurable, not customizable, base type, based on individual clauses, based on values within those clauses, and a level of version tracking changes, of course, red line, of course, but also tracking changes to metadata, to index field, and use changes to evoke or to change the workflow and approval. It's about there is full transparency and accountability across the approval workflow. This off hastens the approval process. Avoid checks, office, automate the rev an application that provides workflow loading within a contract team. With other enterprise systems, why should we be retyping? Why should people be emailing requests for having contracts created? and three or four or five at least messages that go back and forth between the cluster and the contract team. How about direct connection? Right, this per CRM, they're in Salesforce, they're in Dynamics, they make a request, that request is seamlessly moved into the contract team. Yet, based on the invited, generate best first draft and have them do a contract reviewer. For yet again, let's say standard content, it's added clauses to an entity. How about the best first draft and send it off for review to the third party without contract or legal involved? There's a level of data exchange in real time requires a fast, loose, yet pure method of integration. And that's only drives significant improvement in performance. So work nephews or nephews or, or kids, it's just really a little Pike's toy. But yes, very simple, very direct. Add your add groups and have it so that everyone knows who is next and what they're supposed to do with it. Enable decision-making based on metadata. If this deal is outside of the U.S., it needs to go to France. If it's, to, if it's $1 million, Charlie needs to approve it. Um, if they apply clause number five, right, the indication clause, this has to go to Sally and legal. All of that matter of drag-and-drop functionality. As you run through your internal process as well as your external track individual red lines, expose these groups, of course, within Microsoft Word or Google Docs, but also in a browser based platform for real time collaboration. Being able to feed from, in this case, let's say a Salesforce CRM, obligatories, required documents, drawn directly from your opportunity. Further or, or supplemented by user interaction, ultimate first draft. Valorizing the retyping, maximizing the, the sustained value, and at all levels. Getting the performance of the team enables to focus on the performance of the organization. The branch, the division, the department, the company. And all high level 
to kill, increase profitability, and minimize the revenue leakage. Uh, those are, of course, very sales-focused goals. The of course, is by enabling performance management, and a rather common sense one is being able to manage your expiry and renewal. I mean, we often think about uh, the L in CLM, contract lifecycle management, as able to handle the full life cycle from the request to the renewal, uh, to request an agreement written to the where that agreement has been signed, executed, run through, and is then for an extended term. But ahead of ourselves, I'm thinking everybody on today's session is on the sales side. Who drives your enterprise CLM strategy? Is it your department? Is it a contract management function or department? Is it operations function? Is it or still working on it? And I think that this time our team will be able to show the poll results. If not, we'll send them out to everybody separately after today's session. So 40 seconds in, who drives enterprise CLM strategy? A, your legal department. B, step contract management function. C, sales operations. Sales or make that. D, procurement. E, still working on that enterprise CLM strategy. And by the way, no shame at all in choosing E. 15 to go. Lead contract. Operations, procurement, for it to be determined. Ask the marketing team. Team, are you soon to present the results? That was like I Okay. Ooh, and we saw a great chat, a great question come up. Um, um, huh. Question these, and I'll just answer this now since it seems to be rather germane. The biggest is convincing people to stop using Outlook and Word because they are comfortable with it and it works. <clears throat> you know, I absolutely love that. One is we've extended because it's hard for people, right? <clears throat> Getting Microsoft Word or stop sending Outlook to someone in legal because, you know, Sandy in legal has always helped me out, right? Um, Fred on the contract team, Fred has always been there when I've had a question. Um, I don't go to the central portal. I don't need to send a formal request. Well, how instead we provide a Microsoft Word plugin, or better, a Microsoft Outlook plugin that allows people to generate requests, select the form, and send them immediately. Uh, if I can bring up before we uh, close our session today uh, a couple of screenshots, we have an Outlook banner basically, that sits on the left and allows teams to make requests of the contact team through its sounds and questions and answers. This will be in Outlook. They don't have to go to another intranet site. They don't have to remember something. They go to a place they go every day, and they use it to send the request automatically in the CLM. Microsoft Word, I can ask for someone to approve a contract directly from Microsoft Word. Word. The user know any better. We are capturing everything, every revision, every red line behind the scenes. So individual, and I'll answer you offline as well. Excellent, excellent question. It works, and that's why the CRM should be fully adopted. For those of you who are aligned uh, with SAS or business operations, the ability to integrate with those tools, CRM, 
right? Your customer facing platform, um, your price quote, right? Um, or even your business intelligence tool. Being able to use inputs from CRM and CPQ to minimize retyping. Right? Product and service bundles are being offered in contract terms. Now, the customers or your prospects from the CRM into the contracts themselves. Um, why you need the CRM integration? Right, the integration for price bundles, for product and service offerings, the more complex offers makes a world of sense. Feed that directly into the amendment, the agreement, the exhibit within your agreements. Now, from an EI perspective, uh, these are platforms for capturing operational information. I want to manage intimates or like development funds for my distributors or my licensors or I want to be able to track penalties for underpayment or low payment from my customers by tying that back to the core information within my ERP management. Something else where you can really leverage the value of your contract by being back and manage penalty clauses. Again, the goals that are set within the agreement, the performance captured within your enterprise resource planning or manufacturing planning platform. There's the ability to utilize automated to sales and operations teams and upsell opportunities, which are typically different than your original business capture team. The CSM or customer success management role within an organization as a way to simply maintain the status quo. When really strengthen the partnership that you have with your customers. Nowhere is that information best captured than the original contracts that are signed. Your, your customer facing teams have high turnover, a contract that maintains. And I thought organizations uh, overlook that. Sorry to make this sound like a lecture. Um, to manage um, expirations and renewals, um, certainly key. And we hear this over and over again. Um, being able to check milestones, metrics in real time, being able to configure alerts and reminders, uh, things that are upcoming or recently achieved. And these have to be about, you know, go back and re sign an agreement or issue a new amendment. These are in depth and much more supporting of a relationship with the contracted party, whether these long term steady state customers or our key value add suppliers. There, the modifications and objectives as captured within the original contract with your operational data gives you a up or an advantage in establishing an open, trusting relationship. Because, all know, when one of these is out of compliance, our goal is never to can agreement. Our goal is to correct the behavior. Right? You've, ship, you've invested a certain amount just in getting the contract signed. Let's make sure ahead of time that green to yellow or yellow to red and begin this and let's notify people of both negative as well as positive performance. It'll be within the contracting team, the legal team, within the operational theater, within an organization, or external. We'll move to our, our future state. That's um, certainly a big thing. Uh, just look at what's happened over the last well, and I'm sure all of you have crossed these same concerns, right? Um, changes to ours for revenue recognition. Um, measurement is and is not considered a lease and how we both measure the revenue due to us from a lease as well as how we handle the, the so that is quote unquote aspects if it's an obligation. Um, increased awareness with GDPR, which seemed like it was very hot and heavy, then went very quiet and then and bang. Welcome to May, and everyone's sort of scrambling back again. Um, level of steady 
state. Um, it, we all see this run in cycles, but being able to ensure compliance is a matter of not just preparing for the inevitable audit, whether it's an internal or external, uh, but it's able to track and manage all of the supporting documents that lead to this process. So just on audit preparedness, being able to you know, have all of the appropriate versions of your documents stored in the repository, and then have those supporting documents also aligned and stored. Um, have statements made, you know, uh, is the supplier for cloud services, what's their GDPR compliance wording? Do we have a statement? Have they passed their security audit? Um, if I a customer, you know, do we have a mutual NDA? Do we have their version of a BAA or HIPAA in the case of healthcare? Um, have all that in one easy to find location and one to be easily searched, right? We have um, our call of attention span you know, viewers. Uh, we want to be able to open up a box. We want to type into that box. We want to find things. I don't get it. I don't want to search. Most of the times I want Google simplicity. So that, yeah, that's something that we do offer, um, both for all agreement versions, but also for any and all attachments. So we are because everything is searchable text. I'm going to do that quickly and easily, as well as provide a more robust reporting environment. I'm um, being tracked at the level. Your superior. Right. 500 contracts I signed in the month of July. How many are using the correct current template? Right. Have clauses that come, remember, I need to update due to some new regulation. Being able to do that in an automated way just saves an awful lot of time and effort on the back, back end. Any and all supporting documents are both present as well as valid. Our agents listen to industry changes to track for times when there's a gap rule, there's a new IFARS rule, there's a new sensitivity, security, et cetera. Because the ability to manage all of this that prepares us for not the audits, but also just good business practice. Documents of any type associated with particular agreements across the agreement hierarchy, as well as structured searching. Now, I'd be remiss if we didn't spend some time talking about what is both, you know, current and neat, um, as well as what's coming down um, our path or the roadmap uh, uh, for the industry as a whole, but specifically for the Ultria contract lifecycle management platform. And my marketing team has come back and said that they're having some problems with the graphics display, but we will be sharing these with everybody once the call ends. What is the future tech contract lifecycle management concern? And boy, I'd love to have these numbers right now before I spend the next 10 minutes going into it. But A, sourcing. B, risk analysis. C, implementing a blocking, D, self-service chat box. Start contract parting, choice A. B, give risk analysis. This party fell. C, implementing a blockchain. It is blockchain with Bitcoin. Service chat box. <laughs> oh, and someone just chimed in with a distaste for chat box, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, so, with five seconds to go A, smart contract parsing, B, predictive risk, C, implementing blockchain, not Bitcoin, D, chat box. Excellent. Um, I can tell just based on uh, some of the folks chatting in that it seems like chatbots is not anyone's favorite. Um, and some of these, um, we'll show you what we've got for A and B. Um, 
what futurist perspective is, um, and I think an, an unusual blend in the market today between smart contract parsing for the purpose of contract of the paper, um, very closely combined with two other things. Um, electronic discovery, or e disc as well as uh, being able to port So I'll talk about that in a little bit as, as we sort of get to it. I'm going to take a, a quick step. And it just seems, by the way, that of these, um, a vast majority of you picked smart contract parsing and predictive risk analysis. Um, thanks. From a perspective, predictive risk, contact sensitivity, democratization of access, secure related transactions, other things that we are seeing. Um, and to lesser extent, uh, automated transactions, the blockchain model. So we are seeing a very strong interest in predictive risk, um, contact sensitivity in terms of third party parsing, and then providing a broader reach uh, to other folks. So, yeah, in the predictive risk side, in order to drive a risk model, every customer, our category of goods or services sold or goods and services bought, will have a different risk model. It's just the way risk models are built. Now, come up with a well weighted predictive risk. What Ultras works with you. To incorporate your risk models and it needs into your risk models are available both from within the construct of the CLM as well as external to the CLM. The problem here. It's simple to speak to measure performance compliance on contractual terms or contractual obligation metrics. Okay, right. will be up 98% of the time. Okay, um, you promise to pay me within 45 days. Okay, you commit to having no more than 300 simultaneous users and will allow a slight overlap 5% of the time. These are things that can be measured and they're easy enough to document. That enables us to look at current compliance. And by the way, when we think about risk profiling, it's not just for your vendors. It should also be for your customers. A more complete risk model is going to include both performance risk items within the platform, which houses have not been selected? Where did we have to settle for our third alternate or our fallback? Where are options not being met? We have history with us of non-performance or unperformance, or do have an actual risk profile? Or et cetera, that can be incorporated to provide a full risk model. Take contract obligation risk, clause or contract risk, 30 provided weighting, whether it be environmental sensitivity or credit, whatever key acts of your rating could be and then to an overall contract risk. This information simply allows you as the user of the platform um, to watchdog, to filter, to prioritize uh, interactions um, throughout. Ultimately, it's also a way to determine which customers do you not want to renew or which customers do you want to renew under a different set of terms. So use this information as you would to any other risk management platform to make your uh, decisions in the future. 
the shift from uh, an AI parsing perspective, um, you said earlier that we have the ability to take a third-party contract, disassemble it, as uh, each paragraph text uh, as it pertains to a clause, and then provide a percentage match to the library. This lets know whether this paper needs to be heavily redlined or slightly redlined. Perhaps you triage who handles that process. Uh, is it your outside, is it your LPO? Is it outside counsel? Is it in-house counsel? Um, and to order what priority work for region. Um, we'll to leverage artificial intelligence with the content, but now providing a level of context. So beyond seeing a clause in isolation and whether that's got an 86% match to my preferred clause or not, but being able to take it the next level. Uh, this part is outside the United States. They're looking to pay in a non-U.S. currency. That means, oh, and it's multi-year. If those conditions are met, then suggest to the reviewer that there's a currency fluctuation clause built into Section 5 payments, or whatever the case may be. This exists today as configuration. Able to provide democratization of access, and this falls slightly below the somewhat being chat spot. One of the attendees had kicked in a, a quick chat message when the poll and said, Nobody likes chatbots. Um, certainly have to, to agree that that's not necessarily a, a, a top phase. What I found of though is that people at the edge of the organization should have access this platform in some simple way. So West Portal that asks six questions and based on those six questions can generate the best first draft or a process started or guidance. All we have a contract life cycle management platform to act legal sales and procurement professionals. You know, this is not something that is necessarily constituent facing in the, the public sector. What this is, though, is that we want to be able to provide access to the salespeople through their CRM. We want to provide the procurement people through their SRM or through the procurement platform. Um, have direct access to HR through their HRMS platform for contingent labor law, whatever the case may be. We also Maybe we want to go beyond the edge of the organic enterprise, and we want to get into the ecosystem where your company operates. So you may have customers, distributors, licensors, that you want to provide insight into the current contract load. Maybe these are work orders or exhibits to mass service agreements. Um, running a preferred customer platform and your folks will become better customers, show more loyalty, and this is more of a B2B basis, uh, the Apart portal provides this kind of interface. It also allows for um, editing, collaboration, and redlining, of course, um, of various agreements and agreement types uh, directly in the browsing. Notice that this looks different than the other screenshots. Um, this is meant to be used by folks who don't use it that often. It's cleaner. It's more guided to those sort of trading partners, people that you're doing high volume of contracts with. Again, both distributors or customers, as well as suppliers, ability to see how they're doing, but also see how their performance is doing. And this is a great gateway into a customer performance or supplier performance. Block um, was barely selected at all um, in our polling. And, um, yeah, I was chatting with some folks uh, in our industry and in the blockchain and the Bitcoin space. And saying, you know, does this make sense? How come it hasn't taken off? Well, it hasn't taken off and nobody's noticed. Uh, I think it's worth noting that, um, and you'll probably see a blog from us uh, or a post on our, our LinkedIn page probably in the next couple of days. Um, blockchain is a great capability for.
for well-defined transactions that can be highly automated uh, beyond common triggers. Right. I should say, um, we've been living in a world of automated transactions since the early days of programmatic stock trading. If a particular equity share hits a particular price, then buy a thousand shares at that price. That window, and it is you know higher than that, then not move forward. These are very structured, very specific rules. What it enables us to do is once that transaction is agreed upon, what block simply allows us to do is have an unmutable, unrefutable transaction associated with that. And it's having a particular transaction across a distributed ledger, in other words, multiple people, multiple copies of what this thing is, is, is one that's unrefutable. And we can go into probably a full hour or two hour session sometime. But what lie in between uh, a contract lifecycle platform and blockchain? Quite likely, uh, this is where smart clauses and smart agents intersect so that you use the clauses from a business perspective in with metadata the cause of smart agents, both agents who listen for market or information input and those that can act on it. This works commodity environment or commoditized, i.e. brokerage, commodity, currency exchange, as well for more complex types of transactions. So although we that this has been on the brink of widespread adoption, it's been on the brink for some time, we support it. It's an interesting direction. Makes for some great cocktail party discussions at our upcoming IACCM and ACC events, which I hope see many of you either in um, Austin or St. Petersburg. If not both, please um, do pop our boots and, and chat, and we'll uh, roll up our sleeves and grab a cup of coffee and, and work through some of this. But back, you know, the the seal onto the edge of the enterprise. Um, Bring out sort of the, the core capabilities of libraries, template libraries, right, to the automated central repository. Think back to our maturity slide. Running from phase one to phase two, searchable, scalable metadata, robust authoring, driving creation between multiple functions, expedited negotiation. We're sort of moving up in maturity chain. Starting to track milestones by being able to track events, track metrics, and be to the same. And by the way, this is not just alerting you in contract or leading. It's a solution. It's alerting the customer success manager that their customer just hit the next volume threshold and you should push for more sales, right? And wise workflow that is on template types and subtypes, granular reporting, Integration operational platforms, this is moving you to maturity level four, on the edge of maturity level five. But also moving up that maturity scale. It's about risk. Giving you what you need, ensuring that nothing goes out without being approved. Letting pre pre-vetted content. Being a, a creative you know, author process to an assembly process. It, that the filling and the creativity role is means that that creativity and goes into the negotiation process, not assembly process. With your adoption to a simpler UI, embedded portal that asks questions and makes it easy for people at the edge of the organization, this opens one of the barriers to CLM adoption. Those are the same sort of thrusts that I would go with. 
we provide ease of use. All right, Microsoft Word, stay in Microsoft Word. Right. If you prefer going into Outlook, well, instead of sending an email, click on this button. This button will kick up a, a small side banner. Put in your request, hit the send button. We're going to see them anyway. Okay. Right. And then information. Bring information so that you can truly measure predictive risk and get that effectively. Be able to get information from the repository into your sales or operational platform for marketing business intelligence, whatever the case may, may be. But it's got to be easy to use, easy to adopt, and easy to access. Advert, and I'll gather the questions that are coming in. So real true CLM, for those of you who have not uh, chatted with us in the past, uh, we take the contract life cycle, and I put the accent there on life cycle management, space very seriously. Uh, with the initial request for a contract, um, multiple ways, right? You want to be able to make a request to a uh, legal intranet? Perfect. Want to send a request via a, um, uh, a word plugin? Bonus. A plugin? Certainly. Sales products? Sure. Right? From which form you're in, we want you to be able to create, we want you to be able to streamline that so that it doesn't have to be asked for three times in any ways. All right, we have strong, robust, has direct connectivity, and we want to provide the post-award analytics for complete management. All right, there's an enterprise-grade software as a service secure, global-deployed We are multilingual, multi-domain. In fact, not too much on the post award, but post award contract management does allow and provides contract compliance reporting, full audit trail, and predictions based on performance. So thanks. See, we have literally one minute. Let me see what we have on the chat. Chat. We are okay. Um, bop, 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 bop. Interesting. Okay, and I think this might have been in uh, response to my mention of having an Outlook uh, plug. Again, uh, person comes specifically, they're choking on email. Um, how? Why would I want something that generates more email? Uh, Outlook plugin is interesting. It does not generate an email. It is from within Outlook. So we'll just pick some easy names. If Rich, the contract requester, and send email off to uh, Agnes, the author, and sticks on the you know contract request button on his Outlook toolbar. What pop on the left hand side of the screen uh, is three to four to seven questions. What do it? I contract. What kind of contract? Um, NDA. Oh, you're looking for a mutual NDA for the U.S. Yes. Please enter contract party name here. Here. Let him call out while he's in his Outlook screen. He hits send or assume it. And we let him hit send, he'll feel better about it. And what will happen is behind the scenes, a request is generated directly to Audrey, the author, from Rich the requester, and it's directly within uh, that form. Um, can you show a screen grab of the plugin tool? If you want to hang out, I'm okay with the WebEx. I'm going to hash my screen for just a second. While well, screenshot of another tool. Bear with me. Um, 
Uh, let, me let me bring up a new screen. So, let me just run through a couple of different ways you can get a request into the Ultra CLM. Right, Salesforce is very straightforward. Internet portal. Notice that this is a different looking feel. So this might be tied to o.legal.yourcompany.com. Oh, right, so for people, a very simple way to make requests. All right, I was asking that this happens to be the Outlook in. So, type sales, subtype, fill information here, and then this gets submitted directly. Likewise, the external party portal. I think the dashboard. With that, we have maxed out our time. Things that we didn't get to. Um, someone on our team, if not I myself, uh, will come back and answer these. Uh, I'm hoping the next 24 hours. Um, with you to send any questions you might have. Um, if uh, you have questions after this, feel free to mail them directly into info at ultra.com. And we will in turn. Again, this is Arthur Raget with Altria. I'd like everyone for spending time with us today. Uh, this recording will be made available within the next 24 or so hours. And under our team will follow up to see if you have any questions whatsoever. Have a great evening or morning ahead. Cheers.